Good morning. Good morning. All right. We're a couple of minutes, we're 10 minutes late starting. Public hearing is supposed to start at 845. This is a, a public hearing which has been advertised uh, of Warren County Fiscal Court person to KRS 6570472A uh, for the purpose of soliciting input and in the public regarding the establishment of a local development area to be known as Warren County Development Area Number 8. This public hearing is held uh, today, uh, advertised for 845, starting actually at 853. And uh, the rest of this is all about the property which is the Don and Joy Ritchie property at the Trans Park. And it's a very lengthy thing, but this is the eighth of all the development areas that we've uh, developed uh, since the beginning of the Trans Park. And I just wanted you all to understand where we are with this and that if there's any, anyone from the public or any questions from the fiscal court regarding this, we have our attorney, uh, Gil Johnson, who's with us, which explains the length of these headings for the... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you can read it for me. Uh, and also Ms. Rosowski from the Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Johnson, do you have anything to add to well, that? Not, what I want to do, Judge, just very briefly, and because I'm not totally sure how this all works anymore, but the law changed uh, June 29th, 2021. Uh, you've got to have a report now completed and done, and you've had that report completed and done with respect to this. I believe it's in your packages, and it was prepared by Compass Municipal, Keith Brock specifically. It was originally 232 acres. It's down to 15.47 acres. Um, that's to sort of accommodate uh, the existing number seven. So it's going to be tied, kind of tied into number seven, but it's, it's by itself. The expiration date will be April of 2041 instead of December 2041. So it will match up. Okay. And, and it, when you do your first reading and then subsequently consider it for the second reading, the ordinance does in fact have the findings of fact required it in the statute that are found in the report. Those findings for your purposes are I don't know what page they're on, but they're on one of these pages in this report. This is the one I'm referring to right here. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, but it is in compliance with the statute. So, okay. uh, no, the findings are on page uh, page 15 of the report, and they have been incorporated into the ordinance. Okay. Other than that, the ordinance is pretty standard from, from the previous ordinance. Okay. Y'all have Y'all done a number of these, uh, so you, you understand. Done seven of them. If there are any, are there any questions? This, no. If they're not, uh, there are no. Okay, you do. I was going to say, do you need a motion for this? No, we don't need a motion other than to adjourn. Uh, and well, you we, have to ask for the public. I mean, somebody from the public may be here that yeah. wants to make a comment. That's the whole purpose for it. Is that we're we're here to to hear any one from the public who wants to uh, be against it, before it. Say something nice or or uh, curse at me, whichever that you want to do. So it's it's anyone who has anything pertinent to to, to uh, add to it or anything that they'd like to ask in regard to the uh, uh, local development area at the Trans Park yeah, number by eight. By the way, the, the report is a public record, so right. Let's see. Is there anyone here that would like to make comment or ask questions? There being none, um, none to come forward, would uh, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Motion to adjourn by Squire Young, second by uh, Squire, <coughs> Squire Cummings. Uh, any discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Squire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Dorman. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, in uh, three minutes, we'll start the uh, meeting. So, you're in. Uh,
we're just we got three minutes here if anybody needs to go get something to drink or Warren Fiscal Court, Monday, December 6, 2021, is now called to order. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask Esquire Doug Gorman to lead us in the pledge, and immediately following, he will uh, let, uh, excuse me, he will lead us in prayer, and immediately following that, he'll lead us in the pledge. And Squire Gorman. Thank you, Judge. Go, Lord. Lord, thank you so much for this day, this day that uh, you knew would be here. And Lord, I ask that your uh, blessings and grace and mercy be upon this court for the decisions that we uh, are about to make uh, for the best interest of this entire county. And Lord, we just uh, ask for your continued blessings upon this county that we live in, uh, that the freedoms that we enjoy can be protected. And Lord, I ask uh, for a special blessing upon all of the county employees and for the hard work that they do each and every day in the efforts uh, to do things for other citizens in this community. Lord, we're so thankful for the gift of your son Jesus, especially during the season uh, that we're in right now. We ask all these things in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Here. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Here. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Here. Esquire Gorman. Here. Need to approve the minutes of the fiscal court meeting of November 19th, 2021. Motion by Squire Cummings, second by Squire Lawrence. Discussion, questions, additions, or corrections? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, and before we proceed with the agenda, Mr. Cummer, is Mr. Cummer here? Is he online? Or? He's out. Out in the hallway. <coughs> okay. Well, while while he's uh, proceeding, uh, while you're looking for Mr. Comer, wanted to make an introduction. We'll go ahead and approve the work schedule for the Warren County Road Department. So moved. Motion by Squire Young, second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion, questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. All right. And then item number six, we need to approve the personnel changes. Motion by Squire Payne, second by Squire Lawrence. Discussion, <coughs> questions? <coughs> Call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll go ahead and proceed with item number seven. It's to approve first reading of ordinance number 2158, an ordinance of the fiscal court of the county of Warren, Kentucky, relating to the authorizing and establishing local development area for economic development economic and infrastructure development to be known as Warren County Development Area Number 8, designating the ITA responsible for the oversight, administration, and implementation of the ordinance, designation of the uh, and imposition of an occupational tax, license tax, establishing special fund, authorizing and approving a local development agreement, providing for periodic accounting and, and analysis required by the Act with respect to the establishment of the Warren County Development Area Number Eight. Okay, did I read that okay? Uh, 
Can I you want me to read it again? No, no. <laughs> Motion. <laughs> Motion by Squire Cummings and a second by Squire Gorman to approve, uh, approve this uh, establishment of a local development area. Number eight. Okay, we've got motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? I, sh I should also say that we had a public hearing earlier today uh, for the purpose of hearing this. So, if there are no questions, please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. All righty, before we move on to number eight, I'd like to call on my good friend, Chris Comer, who would like to introduce someone and give us some good news. I always like good news. All right, Judge, I like coming to court with friends here. So uh, <laughs> with me here is Jackie Stewart. Um, Jackie is the Recreation Center Director for Living Hope Baptist Church, and we wanted to announce today um, that we have entered into an agreement with them uh, for use of the recreation center for our basketball season for our girls and boys program. And as you all may or may not remember, uh, we had to take a break uh, back in 2020 uh, because of COVID. Yeah. Um, but for two years prior to that, 2018, 2019, um, Living Hope uh, provided several nights during the week and on Saturdays to support uh, our programs. With that being said, we're able to offer um, seven games uh, per the three courts they're going to enable us to utilize. That's 21 games uh, on a Saturday, and that really helps out our program. So just take 21, multiply it by two, and we'll be serving uh, about 40 teams on a given Saturday at their facility. So on behalf of the county park system, we want to thank Jackie, thank Living Hope for their continued support. Well, thank you so much. Jackie, did you have anything you'd like to say? or No? <laughs> We're glad to be working with them again. Okay. Let, let me ask you something. Would, would you do you feel comfortable getting close enough to us that we can get a picture made with you? Because this is a this is a big thing for us. And as Chris kind of explained briefly, this helps us to accommodate uh, recreational programming for kids that we wouldn't be able to, uh, even in spite of all the the additional space that we have. We still have turned children away, and that's not a good. Not a good feeling. Yeah. This is, uh, we, we missed them last year. Uh, of course, we couldn't have the programming that we uh, wanted to have last year anyway, so it didn't, didn't make a heck of a lot of difference since, uh, since we had to close down uh, so, many, so many of our uh, fields and uh, courts. But it really has made a difference over the last several years uh, that they've opened their gym open uh, to Warren, Warren uh, County Parks. And we really appreciate their willingness to do that. Uh, they've got a nice facility, and in spite of the number of courts that we've added, we still have a shortage uh, for the number of people who want to participate in the recreational program. So we're very appreciative to Living Hope. Without the partnership we have with them and with the school district, we'd, we'd never be able to accommodate the, uh, the, 
the kids of, of our community. Uh, anyway, they're always really good sports. We appreciate it. Now, item number eight is a resolution number 2135, a resolution of the County of Warren, Kentucky, authorizing and approving the issuance of Warren County Kentucky taxable industrial building revenue bonds in an aggregate principal amount, not to exceed $15 million, $15 million the proceeds of which shall be used to finance the acquisition, construction, and equipping of an industrial building as defined in KRS 103-201A and leased to Fruhoff, Inc., its affiliates, successors, and or signs authorizing and approving a lease agreement, a payment in lieu of taxes agreement, a mortgage if required, and such other documents, certificates, agreements, and or actions necessary or required for the issuance of the bonds and the financing of the project. You all remember we've already announced Fruhoff. Uh, they manufacture truck trailers. Uh, and we're very, very proud to have them as part of our community. Motion. We have a motion by Squire Cummings, second by Squire Gorman, to approve the resolution. Any other questions or discussion? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Long. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number nine is resolution number 2136, a resolution of the County of Warren, Kentucky, authorizing and approving assignment, assumption, and consent agreement, ground lease, assignment, assumption, and consent agreement, payment in lieu of taxes agreement, first amendment to memorandum of lease, consent, and recognition agreement, and such other agreements documents and certificates necessary and or required to authorize and approve the assignment of a ground lease and payment in lieu of taxes agreement from uh, NP Bowling Green Building uh, Bowling Green Building 1 LLC to Bowling Green Fast LLC. Now, is that motion by Squire Cummings? Second by Squire, Squire Young? Discussion or questions? Do you want an explanation this, Judge? I can't. I couldn't hear you. Yes. I don't know if you want an explanation or not. This, this is. This is. Uh, yes. Yeah. It, it, General Motors is, is purchasing that property. They had an option to do that, um, and their their subsidiary is Bowling Green Fast LLC. Yeah. So they're they're asking that uh, all of the the, the the pilot agreements, et cetera, be transferable that's what this relates to right so, same so, property it doesn't extend the pilot it doesn't extend any it's all I, the same thing it's all the same we're thing just, different person we're just putting the, the corporate the general motors corporation in there by way of the all separate agreed. llc correct right okay any other questions or discussion Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Long. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it, Thank Bill. You. Thank you. Thank you. No more money. No more money. Okay. Um, Item number 10, there's been a request from the attorneys representing uh, the appellants here on, or the proposed appellants, uh, and uh, Mr. Baker, everyone knows Matt Baker. Um, Judge, yeah, the floor is yours, my friend. Yes, sir. Uh, I represent Joe Jean Scott and uh, her son, Steve, his wife, Michelle. Uh, they are neighboring property owners to the... Uh, property that's proposed to be developed. We are respectfully requesting that this matter be uh, pulled from the docket today and passed. Uh, we're in active negotiations with the developer and his counsel, okay. and uh, uh, we'd like the opportunity to have some further negotiations, please. All right. Um, Motion to table the... Let's see, is that, that satisfactory with the... meaningful negotiations and some more time would be helpful to us. So 
That's always better. I hope I hope we can. Um, now, Squire. My motion was to table this until instructions from parties. We have a motion by Squire Cummings, second by Squire Gorman. Discussion? I think this is in the best interest of everyone. Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire yes, Lawrence. Ma Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for being here, Mr. Broderick. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. This, uh, at the earliest, would be on the um, agenda for first reading on the 17th at, at the earliest, so we won't have a, uh, it could be after that, depending on, on their report back. Okay. Item number 11 is to approve second and final reading of ordinance 2157, authorizing a lighting agreement between Warren Rule Electric Cooperative Corporation and North Ridge, Section 12. So moved. Motion by Squire McWhorter. Second by Squire Young. Discussion? Questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Something that on these two res on the resolution for the um, number eight in regard to the uh, Kentucky taxable oh, industrial man. revenue bonds. I know all of you all know this already, but I wanted to just say it for, so for the record: these industrial revenue bonds are they are not. There's no obligation by the county. This passes through directly to, in this case, uh, Fruhoff Inc and is underwritten on the uh, on the strength of their finances so we're we're simply a conduit for uh, for issuing these bonds okay now going back to item number 12 yeah. mm -hmm. uh, approve second and final reading of ordinance 2160 establishing hardcastle avenue Harrow Lane and McCormick Court, located in Hardcastle Farms 1 and 2 subdivisions as county roads and authorizing maintenance thereon and setting speed limits thereon. Motion. Motion by Squire Cummings. Second. Second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion? Questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number 13 is to approve second and final reading of Ordinance 2161 of Warren County procedures for hearing before Warren Fiscal Court relative to recommendations of the, fiscal, of the City County Planning Commission of Warren County, Kentucky, in matters regarding zoning map amendments. So moved. Motion by Squire Gorman. Second by Squire Cummings. Discussion? Questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Item number 14 is to approve the easement for school bus turnaround at Daryl Hitch. I'm not sure, sure exactly where that is, but it's on Rocky Hill Road. So I made it in quarter. Motion by Squire McWhorter. Second with Squire Young. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number 15 is to approve emergency determination in the amount of $1,185.94 to HTC Inc. for parts to repair the rock and salt boxes. Motion. Motion by Squire Lawrence, second by Squire Payne. Any questions or discussion? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am.
Item number 16 is to approve the October 2021 Treasurer's Report. So moved. So moved. Motion by Squire Young, second by Squire Payne. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number 17 is to approve the determination of the amount of $7,375 to Vine and Branch for preventative maintenance on Buchanan, White, and Moore gems. Uh, Wayne and, uh, Vine and Branch is a division of Toad Vine Enterprises and it's a sole source vendor. Uh, this inspection is necessary for safety on all the equipment there. So moved. Motion by Squire Gorman. Second, Squire Cummings, discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number 18 is to approve the purchase of four Ford Interceptor vehicles through Enterprise Fleet Management Agreement for the Warren County Sheriff's Department at a cost of $167,548.80. This price does include the uh, upfitting, the vehicles, and the emergency equipment and installation and striping. So, so motion by Squire Gorman. Second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Brett, uh, I guess we signed up. Yeah, the, the question uh, Magistrate Cummins had, had asked is we had, had previously discussed the hope was we were going to buy the, the Ram trucks. Last year, the Ram trucks were $32,000. When it, we went to Enterprise to take a look at the pricing, they were asking $40,000 for them this year. So the incentives, as we discussed last time, the, this marketability with, with vehicles uh, is, is probably going to change maybe month to month. And so um, still the magistrate had asked, well, would it still be equitable to spend more on the Rams and maybe if the resale value might, might be higher uh, when we eventually sell them? So unknown necessarily on that, these will, these will fit the mark of, of what we currently need um, and, and just to get these vehicles out. I got an email this morning from Enterprise that they're shutting down the Ram trucks uh, probably today as far as even the availability of to purchase those. They're shutting down some of these things earlier and um, it's just speculation on my part that they will do so many police vehicles, retool, and then they're gonna be pushing out the civilian side of vehicles because we're in such a shortage right now. So. Uh, I'm just, just in t essence of trying to get things moving along, it just seems best to go ahead and get more of what we had already got so we can go ahead and fill this order and, and move on. But uh, we'll, we'll see next year how things go. But appreciate y'all's patience, appreciate the questions, yeah. and uh, be happy to talk to y'all more about this. Well, what, what, what's the delivery on these? Um, well, I wish ask. I knew. I no, uh, you know, last year we ordered them uh, a little earlier than we're doing now, and we didn't get them until late September. We actually just got one of ours about two weeks ago, so um, we, we don't know. And that co ends up costing us money because typically about 135, when we get to 135,000 miles, we want to switch those vehicles out. We had to replace a trans or an engine in one of ours that was eight thousand dollars it cost us. So. And had we gotten the other ones in, we would have probably had that one on the sales yeah. block and it would have been leaving, but unfortunately. So we spent a little bit more on uh, repairs last year than we would have liked to. So I met with Greg earlier uh, last week and went over several things like this. And so I think Greg uh, knows that I, I look at each one of these purchases very ag aggressively on how we should do it and, and the best equity for the agency and how we can get the best amount of money on them. So. Thank you. All right. Hey. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay, we have a motion and a second. So, any other questions or discussion? 
Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McCord. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Item number 19 is to approve the determination of the amount of $1,604.88 to Phil Clore Company for ordinance books for the fiscal court clerk. This is a single source provider. Motion by Squire Cummings, second by Squire Young. Discussion, questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number 20 is to approve emergency determination the amount of $2,909 to Comfort Systems USA for heater repairs to the Senior Center at White Park. So moved. Motion by uh, Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Young. Discussion, questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number 21 is to approve first reading of ordinance 2163, rezoning property located at zero Scottsville Road from agriculture to uh, single family residential containing approximately 61.6652 plus or minus acres and presently owned by Wilson Family Trust. Motion. Motion by Squire Cummings. Second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Just want to put on the record that this mm -hmm. zone change is farther out than the zone change we tabled earlier. It mm -hmm. made it denser, and no opposition, and obviously it looked like we may pass it. Just want to put that on the record. Yeah. Right, and, and that is factual. Uh, very, other than that, great similarities. Yes. Any other questions, comments? Ms. Colorado? Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Item number 22 is to approve change order in the amount of $7,800 to Intec Contracting LLC for additional pedestal repair and saddle replacement at the old Richardsville Road Bridge. This is funded through the KYTC Bridge Funds. Motion by Squire Young. Second by Squire Gorman. Yes, sir. I've got a question not related to that, but prior for Josh, and I just wanted to get an update. I know we had some vandalism, but is there a possibility of having as much as I hate to say it, some type of uh, camera system out there at the old Richardsville Road Bridge. Cameras and lighting, is there a possibility of? Yes, so we, we're currently working on um, a lighting plan and uh, the idea of a camera system is possible. I think the question to still be answered is where, do, where does the feed go and who maintains them? Right now there's, there's a, there was an existing camera system that was hardwired and ran to an individual's basement lived on that road to monitor but uh, getting that put somewhere else uh, may be a little bit of a challenge lighting will happen first uh, likely here in the next few weeks cameras will come after that great All right. thank you Good. thank you thanks for getting it cleaned up yeah. so so yeah. quickly no problem we have any timeline that's when yeah. it's going to be over yeah it's actually done i was te texting with the judge last night we're trying to work on getting a ribbon cutting set um, the state wanted to come back out and do a follow-up inspection to make sure all our signage was in accordance with their standards. So they're supposed to be there, I'm hoping, today. Um, after that, it's just a coordination effort with you guys to figure out when we can do a ribbon cutting on it. Um, kind of a neat thing to share. Uh, there's a gentleman that lives on that road, um, last name Minton. 
He uh, and he wants to be the first to drive across the bridge. Uh, he's in, in his 90s, 99. 99. So we're going to try to make that happen and get that coordinated. But uh, that'd be great. Just getting the moving moving pieces in place. So. Hayward Minton has lived out there. Yeah. It's yeah. al almost as since the bridge was built. Well, he's, I mean, he's got stories of uh, of all the different things that have come across that bridge over yeah. the years. And well, we absolutely want to make sure that he is yeah. part of it, and uh, also the Secretary of Transportation. Uh, we need to we need to ask him. To I was going to reach down. out today to the chamber to see what I can fit in and try to send back out something mm -hmm. with uh, a couple dates because I, I definitely want you all to be there and the secretary as well. And his schedule will be the hardest to pin down, but. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get it open as soon as possible, but I also want Mr. Minton to be the first to drive across it. So we're, we're kind of keeping the barriers across it right now. It looks really good. Yeah. And, and again, I assume the pressure washing got most of everything yeah. out of the wood, but uh, you had to do a little painting on it. Yeah, the we got the majority of the, of the graffiti off the wood planks with the pressure washer. There's some faint stuff there, but I think it'll be gone soon with the sun. Uh, the stuff that was on the bridge itself, on the steel, we found some green that was pretty close to Garvin Green, painted over it best we can. Uh, I, I think it's it's definitely presentable. It's not obscene anymore, so I think everybody will be happy with that. So, righty. Yeah. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions for Mr. Moore before he gets comfortably seated? <laughs> All right. Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, Esquire Young, yes, Esquire Cummings, yes, Esquire McWhorter, yes, Esquire Lawrence, yes, Esquire Foreman. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, Mr. Lord, if you all could excuse me just one second. Item number 23, let's approve order 2124, reappointing Jesse Varner to the Warren County Codes Enforcement Board. So moved. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Young. Discussion or questions? Let's call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Forced to approve the 2021 budget amendment for the Warren County Sheriff's Department. This budget amendment was for changes to operational costs in the end of the year purchases. Uh, there are no additional funds requested. So moved. Motion by Squire Cummings. Second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion? Questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne. Yes, Esquire Young. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings. Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lodge. Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman. Yes, ma'am. Item number 25 is to approve the first quarter quarterly financial report for Warren County. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second by Squire Young. Discussion, questions? Hey, Greg, uh, I just want to make sure it is the first quarter or the first? Yes, it is first. for the first quarter. Yes. <coughs> first quarter of the fiscal year. Of the fiscal year. Fiscal year. Yeah. yeah. Which would be the end of September. September. Right. Right. 
Any other questions? Ms. Colorado? Ms. Payne? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Young? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Ms. McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Gorman? Yes, ma'am. Item number 26 is to approve first reading of ordinance 2159 amending the budget of Warren County. Motion by Squire Gorman, second by Squire Cummings. Discussion, questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman? Yes, ma'am. Item number 27 is to approve interfund transfers. Motion by Squire McWhorter, second. Squire Cummings, discussion, questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman? Yes, ma'am. Item number 28 is to approve determination in the amount of $14,965 of from Toad Vine Enterprises at KPC Pricing for new Wi-Fi scoreboards to be located at Griffin and Ed Spears Parks. And the old, those scoreboards just don't work anymore. So moving, Motion by Squire Young, second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Please call the roll. Esquire Payne? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire yes, Lawrence? Ma Esquire Gorman? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Item number 20, 29 is to approve the 211 report for November 2021, motion by Squire Lawrence. Okay. Second by Squire Payne. Discussion or questions? Being them, please call the roll. Esquire Payne? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman? Yes, ma'am. Item number 30, will the treasurer please present the claims to the court? General fund, $1,882,210. Road fund four hundred sixty-two thousand six hundred seventy-two dollars. Jail fund three hundred forty thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars. Stormwater fund fifteen thousand one hundred twenty dollars. E nine one one fund seventeen thousand four hundred forty-nine dollars. Hotel tax fund one hundred forty-six thousand nine hundred sixty-eight dollars. And TIF fund two hundred fifty-nine thousand three hundred forty dollars. We have to answer any questions. Make a motion to pay the claims as submitted. Motion by Squire Young to pay claims as submitted and second by Squire McWhorter. Discussion or questions? Let's call the roll. Esquire Payne? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Young? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Cummings? Yes, ma'am. Esquire McWhorter? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Lawrence? Yes, ma'am. Esquire Gorman? Yes, ma'am. All righty. Um, Sheriff Hightower, how are you, sir? Very well, Judge. Just want to say how, how good it was this weekend with uh, the Smith Grove Parade, the Bowling Green Light Up, uh, and the Bowling Green Parade. And, and I know several of y'all had, had floats out there and participated. It was just so good to see so many people in the community since last year. We had to cancel a lot of these events. And I want to thank everybody for either donating or coming out for the fundraiser we had um, Saturday night for one of our dispatchers, Tyler, and his son that is undergoing uh, uh, cancer treatments right now. So we raised, uh, between that event and a, and a luncheon we had, we raised over $10,000.
to help support that family. And so really appreciate. If you haven't had an opportunity to donate, um, see Candy Hood or our dispatch, and, and there's always an opportunity for that. But they're, they're going to be going through several more months of him getting treatments down in Nashville. So just as we go through the holidays and can celebrate a lot, we still have to have a lot of prayers for those that are enduring a lot of things too. So, But thank you all very much. And I think we've got the uh, boys and uh, Richardsville parade this weekend uh, as well on the same day. I was hoping they were going to get, because uh, they moved them, but then they end up on the same day again. <coughs> um, so. They ended up being separate, or they started out being yeah. together. Then they separated, which made it easier, yeah. which made it possible all right. to, to attend both. And now they're right back, back together. together again. Yeah. Then, so... so. Yeah. That'll be uh, this, this coming Sunday. So and and turns out yesterday it was all canceled because of uh, weather. weather and it was a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Beautiful. Day. So, <laughs> all right. But thank you all very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Miss Yates is not with us today. They're busy downstairs. Uh, Jailer Harmon is not not with us, or and he's not online. All right, All right um, Mr. Comer, always happy to see you. Judge, I uh, just wanted to give the court a quick update uh, in regards to a couple things. Uh, I just wanted to share some participation and rental stats uh, with everybody. You all will be getting a more formal uh, percentage breakdown in the coming days. But since November 1 with the new tennis facility, we've had over 693 rentals. So at the new facility there, we're averaging 23 rentals a day. Uh, we've had over 1,082 participants go through the facility. Just to compare, at our other two large gyms, at Ephraim White Gym, we've had 170 rentals during that same time period. Now remember, those rentals are a little bit different than tennis because the max number of players you can put on a tennis court is four. The max number of <laughs> basketball players or volleyball players we can put on a court, depending on what it is, is uh, 10 to 12. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. So at Ephraim White Gym, 170 rentals in that same basic 30-day stretch, uh, over 2,325 participants there. And then in comparison to Michael Buchanan Gym, we've had 103 rentals. Uh, but those rentals, again, some of those events have been large, so those have had 4,368 uh, participants come through the door. So for November 1 through November 30th, we've had in excess of 7,640 participants um, come through those uh, three facilities. We've never had a facility in my 22 years of being here where we've had 693 rentals come through the door. So just wanted to keep everybody updated on that, on those numbers. That's pretty amazing. Yep. Pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Mr. Moore, he left. Mr. Moore just uh, he just, left. just took off. He quit. <laughs> Mr. Pearson is not here. Mr. Puckett, he needed to quit. Mr. Loving is not with us today. Uh, Susan Lewis, PVA. Thank you for being here. Everything going well in your office? Going good. Smoothing out. Good. Good deal. Mr. Appling is not with us. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Jay. Mr. Markram. Merry Christmas, Jay. Thank you. Merry Squire Payne, you have anything you'd like to share? Judge, I'd just like to tell everybody to be safe during the holidays. Thanks, Tom. Everything good? Everything's good. Good deal. We're going to have a Christmas parade in my district if I can get that train out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Squire Lawrence. Thank you, Joe. That'll have anything right there. <laughs> Squire Gorman. I mean, just a great, great weekend with the parades and looking forward to next weekend, too. Uh, 
I do want to say I've known Hayward Minton for over 35 years and uh, World War II veteran, still drives, he's 99, but I would have a request that when he drives over the bridge, he's driving away from us and not towards us. <laughs> thank you, Judge. All right, thank you, sir. Squire Cummings? I'm not going to be as, as yeah. small as they are. Never are. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate South Warren's football team. Yes. For state championship, uh, I'm going to try to work out a time to come be honored in court sometime yeah. after the first year. But uh, congratulations to them, amazing season. Uh, my grandson happens to be on the team, which helps a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, want to thank James and his staff for all the Christmas decorations, making courthouse and, and everything you know, really joyful. And I, I appreciate their work and efforts yeah. for everything that whoever was involved in doing that. So yeah. I'm going to give credit whoever did it. So great. Yeah. Huh. Um, I want to say congratulations and thanks to the curbside, Terry and Steve Sheldon. They just yeah. got through having their uh, seventh annual Bags of Blessing this past weekend, and I was honored to help them again. I'm, I've been there Santa Claus for the last six years, and, and I can tell you, if you really want to get a good perspective on our entire community, go to yeah. that organization and see what they do and how they minister to the folks over there. So it was, just, it was, a, great, it was a great day. They serve a lot of people and people that people. appreciate it. So, very much. And then as a reminder, a boys' Christmas parade that was moved now until next Sunday at 2.30. And, uh, and so anybody wants to come out and be part of that, it's the, it's, I call it the best Halloween on steroids trip. Because <laughs> there is a lot of candy getting thrown out and it'll be, yeah. it'll be a big event. And invite everybody out to come and participate in that. So, okay. thank you. Thank you, sir. Squire Young. Thank you, Judge. Everybody's mentioned the uh, rescheduling of the Christmas parades. Uh, Richardsville was moved because of COVID to this coming Sunday. Welcome everyone to come out and enjoy that event. And yeah, there's a lot of candy that will be thrown. Just to remind everyone of the season especially everyone here, everyone that's blessed like we are, mm -hmm. to remember those that are not so blessed. It's a, it's a season of giving. We can all do our part. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Squire McWhorter. I'm wishing that our road department employees will get healthy. Uh, I know we've had a lot of sickness there, and uh, pray for those guys and girls. Certainly we do, and uh, I thought possibly um, Mr. Moore would report on this, but we've had uh, COVID go through the road department. A number of them have been off, so we're operating with a skeleton crew. So if you've noticed that there's not... Uh, there are not as many road department uh, trucks out on the road. Uh, it's because uh, they're home getting well, uh, many of them. So, and the, the rest of them are cleaning and disinfecting all, all the equipment and, uh, uh, and the office and workshop. So, uh, and certainly our prayers are with all of them. I know that one gentleman down there, who's ha his wife is in the hospital and uh, they're taking it seriously. They're not, and, and I'm not sure that the COVID has actually gone through the road department. I think maybe they were, it's just coincidental that they brought it in from outside the road department. So, but we did feel a, a need to go ahead and make sure that they all stay home and, and away from each other. So it didn't spread within. Thanks for reminding me about that. Squire McWhorter. Ms. Bester, do you have anything you'd like to share? Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Mr. Burrell? Thank you, Judge. Judge, our, our, our real county attorney is back there. <laughs> she, she's not supposed to be seen back there. She <laughs> snuck in to, to, to actually watch and make sure that we're doing things right. At least that's what I'm, I'm assuming. Absolutely. That, 
that's my job. Um, I, I do want to make sure that everyone knows on Sunday at 2 o'clock, Got Volunteer Fire Department is having a dedication for Kyle Hendrick. Yeah. Um, so that is certainly, we lost him. What time is ago. that? 2 o'clock. At Got Fire Number 2? Number 2. Number 2. So that's something we all need to be made aware of. So. Yeah. Every one of you who can be there should. That was, um, I'm glad they're dedicating it to. Okay. Um, Judge Smith, do you have anything you'd like to share? Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Hale. Thank you so much, Judge. All righty. Um, our next meeting is Friday, December 17th at 9 a.m. here. Um, at this point, Spectrum is, uh, is scheduled to give us a report on what they've done with the Ardolf area. And I don't know if, how many of you remember the difference between the Ardolf area and the other, other areas, that, but the Ardolf area is a federally uh, contracted area that they have is on the western perimeter of the uh, western and northern perimeter of the county, which would be affect mostly your uh, your district, uh, Mark. But um, anyway, I'm not sure what they've done, but they're supposed to give us a report there. I don't know that they'll be here. They may be, probably will be on Zoom, but that's really up to them. Um, but th they're scheduled to be there then, and also. Um, Brian Mefford with Vetro Mapping is supposed to be either here or on Zoom uh, to give us a, an update on the broadband mapping throughout the, the county. And that's a, uh, I've seen just a, a, a preview of it and it's, it's pretty impressive the way that they uh, can show house to house. It should be very effective and should be very helpful to you all and to the uh, to the public because they'll be able to when we get it completed they'll be able to go online and actually look and see who services that house uh, and how much they're going to charge them uh, some of them charge like NCTC is charged as a constant price uh, and some of the others charge first year price uh, and then uh, We'll, we'll see how we'll see how they uh, uh, present that in open court. But anyway, there's there's a big there's a difference, and some areas will be served by only one. Some will be served by two or three. But at the end of this next year, I hope to have everybody served, uh, and not only effectively but efficiently and and uh, competitively uh, but that's they both those entities should be here of course nctc and R, and recc already did this like two meetings ago and i've been trying to schedule uh the, these entities and they should be should be both here this next week um or two weeks from now also um december 10th before our next fiscal court meeting, uh, you might note that Abby Milliken is going to have a birthday, December 10th. <laughs> and on December 16th, Esquire Cummings is going to have a birthday. He's going to be... Uh, uh, I don't mind. I'll be proud 62, and I'll be proud he make it that far. So. You're only 52? 60. 62. <laughs> And I'll be proud to get there. <laughs> I, I, totally, I totally understand that. I'm proud of every birthday. Uh, happy, happy upcoming birthday, Ron. <laughs> and happy birthday to Abby Milliken. And no other business to come before May this body? I body? interject one more thing? I want, yes, to I want to applaud you, the chamber, and everybody at this workforce participation program that's starting. It's something that I'm, I'm proud that we're part of, and, 
especially your leadership in this thing, I, I just want to say thank you because that is one of the major things facing us over the next 10 years. It's the major thing. Yeah. It's the major thing, not only for us, but for every community throughout the United States. But our job is to do a better job of, of meeting the challenge than every other community throughout the United States. I just want to say States. thank you for your leadership and thank you. the push on that. So. Thank you very much. I think we're going to make a difference. Any other business to come before? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn by Squire Lawrence and second by Squire Patton.